Hi, everybody. This is Alan Elman, the Blue Collar Investor, and welcome to this BCI podcast number 40. This one is titled Covered Puts Are Not Cash Secured Puts. Now, frequently, retail investors get confused with two strategies that sound the same, but in reality are quite different. Uh, cash secured puts. Uh, are, uh, is one of the go-to strategies in the BCI methodology, whereas covered puts are too risky for most retail investors. This podcast will describe and give hypothetical examples of both. Now, uh, cash secured puts, as I said, are one of the go-to strategies in the BCI methodology, and this, this strategy works as follows. We sell a put option, generally an out-of-the-money put option, which means lower than the current market value of the stock, against a better performing stock or an exchange-traded fund. So we screen our stocks from fundamental, technical, and common sense perspectives to create a watch list of eligible stocks against which we we can sell our call and put options. Today's podcast, we're focusing in on put options. Now, the broker will require retail investors to place cash into the brokerage account to secure that put. So in case the put buyer decides to exercise that put, the cash is there to uh, have the shares put to us. In other words, we're obligated to buy the shares at the put strike, so the cash is there in case Uh, that future transaction does in fact get executed. Now, the formula that the broker uses to determine how much cash is required to secure the put is as follows. It's the put strike price, the amount that we're agreeing to buy the shares for, minus the put premium times 100 per contract, and then times the number of contracts. So that will dictate how much cash we're required to put into our brokerage account. Once the cash is there, then the put can be sold and is in fact secure. Now exercise of that put will take place if the price of the stock moves below the strike price. Remember the out of the money put was lower than current market value. So if the value of the stock moves down to the strike and below it, and we take no action, then the shares will be put to us after expiration at the strike price. Now, uh, let's uh, look at a hypothetical example here. Let's assume for a moment that uh, BCI is trading at $50 a share, and we sell the 45 out of the money put for $2. Now, how much is our broker going to require us to put into the cash account per contract? Well, the put strike is 45. The put premium was $2. That's 43 times 100 shares. So $4,300 will be placed into our brokerage account to secure that put. Now, if the trade is unexercised, that means we generated $200 on a cost basis of $4,300, which represents a 465 percent one month return since we sold a one month option, which annualizes out to 53%. Now our break even or our maximum loss is $43 per share. We're agreeing to buy the shares at 45 and we received the $2 premium. So our break even then is 43. Now if in fact the shares are put to us at 43, that will represent a 14% discount from the price of the stock when we initiated the trade. If you recall, BCI was trading at $50 when we sold the 45 out of the money cash secured put for $2. So that's a 14% discount. So one result would be the uh, 4.65% one month return. And the other result would be buying the stock at a discount of 14%. Now, we could use the BCI put selling calculator for all of these calculations. Now, let's move on to covered puts. That was cash secured puts, a uh, 
strategy friendly to the BCI community. Now we're gonna look at covered puts, which is a strategy that generally is not used by most retail investors. It is a bearish strategy, but there's a lot of risk inherent in this strategy because it starts out by shorting a stock. Now shorting a stock means we borrow it from our broker and then sell it at current market value. So the cash from that sale is generated into our account. However, we're obligated to pay the broker back. Now, when you short a stock, you're bearish on the stock, so you think it's gonna go down in value. And if it does, you could buy it at the lower price generating a profit. When you short a stock, you also have to pay the broker interest because you are borrowing something of value. Now the put option is sold on the same stock and that will generate a credit into our account. So there's really two credits that's generated, one from the sale of the shorted stock and the other from the sale of the put option. But remember, we have two obligations, one to pay the broker back from shorting the stock and the other to buy the stock at the put strike should the put buyer decide to exercise that option. Let's set up a hypothetical example. BCI is still trading at $50, and therefore we short the stock and sell it at 50. So 5,000 per 100 shares is then generated into our account. We have to pay the broker back. Now we sell the out of the money 45 put for $2. So $200 per contract is also generated into our account. Now let's look at this from three perspectives, maximum loss, maximum gain, and break even. Let's start with worst case scenario, maximum loss. Well, the share price can rise to infinity. Remember, we borrowed the shares from the broker. We have to pay the broker back. And this is the reason why most retail investors should not get involved with shorting stocks. This is not an appropriate strategy for most of us. Now the put premium is, is a credit, so that will slightly offset any losses on the stock side, if there are losses on the stock side. Let's uh, set up an exaggerated example where the price of the stock moves from 50 and doubles up to 100 during that contract. I know that's exaggerated, but it will help us make the point. On the stock side, we sold it for 50 and we bought it back at 100. So we lose $50 per share. That hurts. Now the put sale generated $2 per share. So the net loss <clears throat> is $48 per share. That's of course an exaggeration, but it just goes to show you the risk if the price of the stock goes to the moon after we shorted the stock. Now let's look at the other perspective, the maximum gain. Well, if the share price declines to the put strike or below the put strike, then uh, our, uh, we are obligated to buy the shares at 45. So we're buying the shares at 45. We already sold them at 50 when we shorted the stock. So that represents a gain of $5 profit. Remember, we also had a, $5, a $2 profit on the sale of the put. So our net total profit is $7 per share, and that, folks, is our maximum gain. Finally, let's look at our break even. Well, we know that we're obligated to uh, pay the broker back uh, for shorting the shares. So if the price of the stock moves up uh, by $2, the amount of the put premium, that's our break-even price. If it moves higher than that, 53, 54, 55, at that point in time, we start incurring a loss. So our break-even price then is $52. The uh, price of the stock when it was shorted plus the put premium that was credited to our account. Once again, a risky, risky strategy. Let's summarize. Selling cash secured puts is a completely different strategy from covered puts. Do not get the two confused. The latter, covered puts, involves shorting stocks, 
which should only be considered for sophisticated, experienced investors. And it also, by the way, requires a much higher level of trading approval. Very, very difficult for retail investors like ourselves to get approval for this type of trading. Now, on the other hand, selling cash secured puts is a low risk option selling strategy. I didn't say no risk, but low risk that is appropriate for most retail investors. But you should first master the three required skills, stock selection, option selection, and position management. What do we do after we enter our positions? These must be mastered before we uh, start executing any trade, low or high risk. So uh, before I close out uh, this podcast, I just want to remind everybody that on our website, www.thebluecollarinvestor.com, on the top black bar, we have a link for free resources, which includes uh, the uh, Elman calculator, the basic version. We also have a single column put calculator and several other free resources available. Uh, we have training vi videos and ask out. Uh, we have uh, beginner's corner tutorials. Uh, check out the website. There's a lot of free resources on our website. And in, in the bluecollarinvestor.com store, we have video lessons, uh, online DVDs, ebooks, uh, hard and soft cover books, uh, calculators, spreadsheets, trade planners, online mentoring, so much information that will help us master the strategies of option selling. I want to thank everybody out there for taking the time to listen to and in some cases watch BCI podcast number 40 titled Covered Puts Are Not Cash Secured Puts. Folks, I hope you enjoyed this podcast and most importantly, I hope it benefits you. As always, this is Alan Elman, the Blue Collar Investor. Take care, everybody.